Hey everyone, it's Dr. Meyer here for you with the second video in this series on sequences. Let's focus our efforts now on harmonic sequences. In case you missed the first video, recall that there are two types of sequences, melodic and harmonic, or chordal. The focus of this video will be the harmonic sequence rather than melodic. All sequences feature a repeated pattern at a new pitch level after an initial statement of a musical idea. Harmonic sequences are used to further musical progression, sometimes even enacting a modulation. We're going to focus on diatonic sequences, which preserve the contour of a repeated pattern, but not necessarily the exact intervals. In this way, we generally stay in the original key and do not modulate. In tonal music, the harmonic sequence is a motivic pattern of one or more harmonies in succession that is restated in transposition, usually two times or three times, preserving the same relative motion of each part or voice, just like we saw in melodic sequences. By creating harmonic and tonal variety with a unified pattern, the sequences serve as a means for musical development. Two types of sequences are commonly used, non-modulating or tonal sequence, which keeps the restatements all in a single key, or a modulating sequence, which may traverse several keys. At times, sequences don't follow normative progression of chords, so you may come up with some strange Roman numerals, but that's okay. In melodic sequences, we look to the treble voices, but in harmonic sequences, we will look to the bass voices. Listen to this Corelli Concerto Grosso and see if you can hear a sequenced bass line pattern. the bass pattern is repeated here in sequence. We have an original statement and then two repetitions. You can even see a melodic sequence in this bass line by checking out the contour of the line as well. Regard how a third statement begins but is never finished. This is a failed restatement. Let's check out the harmonies of the chords here. We can see that there are two chords in each restatement. So let's see how they're related to each other. By examining the Roman numerals in E flat, we compare the beginning of each repeated pattern of two chords, and we can see that they are a third away from each other. The pattern even continues down to F minor, but this is not a true restatement because it lacks the other half of the original statement. It's important to note that the intervening chords here in the second position of this multiple chord sequence can be any distance away from that initial chord. We're going to label this sequence starting from the original harmonies of each group. So going back to the score, we can see that the harmonies are a descending third from restatement to restatement through octave equivalence here, of course. So we're going to call this a descending third sequence based on that root motion that we just analyzed. Interestingly, the upper voices are also moving in sequence here, which you can observe as a melodic sequence, also in descending thirds. Way to go, Corelli. Listen once more and hear all this sequencing. It's important to stop here and note that whether a sequence has one or two or more chords in each repetition that you determine the relationship between all of the bass notes as they progress. At times, a melodic sequence will mask an ordinary single chord sequence by making it look like it's a multi chord sequence. So for example, in our Corelli sequence, the root motion we had was down a fifth and up a second according to the roots. 
we can confirm this is a two chord sequence pattern in this way. So to restate, always check the root relationships no matter what the musical surface resembles because sometimes you may have that relationship with a single chord versus two chords. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Listen to this bassoon concerto excerpt from Vivaldi. <laughs> Looking at the surface pattern, we can see that each measure looks like it's repeating. But you can also segment it into half measure blocks through each chord change. So which is the best analysis here? Here are those harmonies. Let's analyze the root motion between them to see which analysis is the best here. Okay. If we write out the root motion of these chords onto a bass staff, we can see more clearly that each chord is successively lower. Examining more closely, we can see that each chord is a fifth lower than the prior chord. We'll call this then the descending fifth sequence. Notice how each chord is the same distance from the last. This is that example of a single chord sequence. The only motion here is fifths. So the segmenting was every half measure according to our analysis instead of every measure like the melodic sequence on the surface suggests. This descending fifth sequence also has another name because it follows a specific tonal progression that we theorists call the circle of fifths sequence because it is based on the descending circle of fifths if you go anti-clockwise around that circle diatonically. Listen once more to this sequence filled example. Now may be a good time to discuss which are the most common sequence types. It's easier to remember when you put them in this order, so you can know which are descending and which are ascending. So just like melodic sequences, harmonic sequences of descending and ascending seconds root motion also common. Descending thirds, ascending seconds, or descending fifths, our recent circle of fifths example, these are also common. The ascending fifth sequence goes against tonal motion by going around the circle of fifths clockwise. So you generally won't get a full progression of this sequence, but remember harmonic function does not matter. And so the ascending fifths are also a common sequence that you may see. It's also good to note here that sequences can be varied by changing inversions or adding sevenths to the chords. So be on the lookout for those small variations. They don't change the fact that a sequence is happening because we're always measuring root to root motion. Now it's your turn to practice. Listen to this example from Brahms fourth symphony first movement. labeled the first segment of a melodic sequence in the treble staff here, so be careful not to be confused by that sequence which is also going on. Stick to the bass line, figure out the root motion. Use E minor for your Roman numerals here, and now's a good time to pause, give yourself more time. You should have found the progression C major, G major, D minor, and A minor, or major six, major three, minor seven, minor four. Yes, minor seven. Sequences are weird, aren't they? Analyzing the root motion, you should have found that the roots are moving a fourth down or a fifth up, which these are inversions of one another, so both labels are correct here. Returning to the score, we can see that the baseline for each measure is our repeated chord segment, which sequences up a fifth with each successive repetition. 
So we are going to label this one an ascending fifth sequence. Listen once more to this example now that you have this analysis in mind. We learned a lot in this video. Like melodic sequences, harmonic sequences are patterns, but of chord progressions instead of melodies. We focused on diatonic sequences, which stay within a single key. And sometimes the Roman numerals don't make any sense at all. And that's okay, it's a sequence. The biggest take home here is that you should always, always analyze the root motion of your sequence to determine the label. It's not always what it seems on the surface. Sometimes those melodic sequences are a little tricky. In the next video or videos in this series, we are going to go more in depth into chromatic sequences, both harmonic and melodic, and what we call a linear intervallic pattern. Plus, I promise we will practice more of this together in class. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.